What is going on guys? This is Alex, the Comic Hoarder. Welcome to my channel. I'll be doing a review right now of a book that I just picked up today. It's called The Amazing Spider-Man, Renew Your Vows Number 1 from Marvel Now. And um, I'll be doing a non-spoiler review first, followed then in the same video by a little bit more of a review of the book and the story. Um, so that is the standard cover. You can pick this up at your local comic shop. And um, let me see if this will work. But you can go on to J. Scott Campbell's website and pick up some of these um, exclusive variants from J. Scott Campbell. And you can get a the different um, versions there. I just recommend going to the website and checking those out. That's a pretty cool one there. I ordered the the cover A signed by J. Scott Campbell. I think the total came to with shipping um, $35. So that's not terrible, honestly, for a signed with certificate of J. Scott Campbell for this new series. And I just like uh, his work, so I'd be willing to pay that. So first of all, um, this story is written by Jerry Conway. The artist is Ryan Stegman. And um, there are three stories within this one book. And the first one is Brawl, In the Family Part 1. And then there is the, the Earnest Adventures of Spider Dad, which I did not read. And then Make It Work, which I also didn't read. The um, artwork is actually really nice. I really like the artwork. Um, you can see some of the pages there. Um, really nice artwork. And as a matter of fact, um, it has some J. Scott Campbell um, tones to it, you know. Uh, I feel like, uh, like if J. Scott Campbell were to draw an interior of a book, it would probably look similar to this. So, um, the, as far as my non-spoiler review, I would say the artwork is good. It's very quick paced. Um, I like that. I like um, how it reads like you would think uh, like, like a movie would play, play out. And so, I like that. There's some really nice um, spreads there in the book. The story is good. It's easy to um, follow, and as a non, um, how do I put this? I am not a current Amazing Spider-Man reader. I'm not much of a Marvel reader at the moment, but I want to try to get into Marvel, so I'm reading, uh, some, picking up some of these books where I can. Um, I was going to pick up The Avengers number one last week, but with the reviews, um, that I've seen out in the community, I decided not to pick that up. But I, I wanted to give this one a shot. I like Spider-Man. I wanted to pick up Renew, Renew Your Vows and see the family aspect of Peter Parker and try to read that. And so, as far as that's all concerned, as a non-Spider-Man reader, this is easy to follow and I'm enjoying it. I like it. It's quick paced and the story's easy to follow. Um, Non-spoiler review, I'd probably give it four out of five stars. Uh, as a father, as a husband, I like reading this kind of stuff. I like reading the interaction and relating to that aspect of Peter Parker's life. So, with that being said, uh, if you want to pause this video or come back to it for a, a more of a spoiler review, just kind of going through the storyline of this, uh, please feel free to do so. But as of right now, I'm going to start doing some spoilers. So, here we go. So, the story starts out with Peter Parker in the midst of battle and what's funny is he's going over as he's doing flips and avoiding uh, the scorpion's tail um, strikes from that tail he, he is going over his um, honeydew list the the shopping list and he's trying to figure out what he's forgetting and it's uh, juice boxes so he needs to pick up juice boxes for Annie Mae and you can see here as he's being, uh, once again, dodging um, the scorpion strikes, MJ chimes in on the communicator. And she's asking him, you know, are you there? And he says, you know, this is a bad time fighting scorpion. And then he says, no, you know, I'm fine. What's going on? So he's actually having a conversation. He gets hit by the scorpion. While he's in this conversation, you know, MJ's chiming in. He gets distracted and he gets hit. 
by the scorpion. Well, MJ says we have a code green. I repeat, code green. So that's lingo for their family. Now, I'm not sure who this is, who this character is, but they're talking about a property, um, and they're talking about government allies, and if they secured the property, not quite sure. But anyways, um, before that happens, um, Peter Parker realizes MJ's talking about Code Green, so he immediately ties up the scorpion. And I'm not sure if that's a, you know, something from a prior book, but you'll find out what Code Green is here in a second. So, um, yeah, this unknown character to me is talking about, with his assistant, talking about um, this, uh, this property. Either way. So anyways, Peter Parker gets home, and they're discussing how the daughter is asleep in bed, and he's... Um, so code green obviously must mean adult only time for their household and so as adults and parents of young ones you know how valuable that is but then they hear um, some thwips and they hear some eeks and some screams and we see that Annie Mae has tangled herself up in some webbing and so they're having family time talking about how Annie Mae is nervous that she's going to be in trouble she was just trying to make the um, technology better and they're relating to her Peter and MJ are relating to their daughter and the fact that they are both were very curious at that age so the interaction between all of them is awesome uh, it's very realistic with the exception of the technology but uh, then in the morning Peter Parker is talking and like I said fast-paced if you all have gotten kids ready in the morning you will know that this is the real deal this is the real thing but um, Peter Parker's going over his uh, shopping list again. They're talking about what to get Speedy, the turtle. He likes carrots, not cabbage. And he's making, Peter Parker's making pancakes. The interaction is just crazy. And uh, I guess the takeaway from this is that they're a normal everyday family other than the fact that Peter Parker has um, extraordinary abilities and so does Annie Mae. And they're talking about how she shouldn't use those flipping abilities without their parents without her parents giving her permission first this includes in school even if there are emergencies and that's why peter gave everybody these two-way communicators so that they can figure that stuff out okay i'm not going to go into too depth in depth but um uh, mr jameson was buying some pictures from peter it's really fast-paced as you would assume um, he would be in conversation with Peter Parker. Um, he's just very rough to the point and very quick with his uh, speaking. So that is a good interaction. This assistant, which I'm not as familiar with, um, she helps Peter get a little bit more money from $200 to a grand. So that really helps him out. And then um, there, and then, uh, as Peter and the assistant are talking, uh, Mr. Jameson comes out and says, Hey, Parker, you need to be down there just in case Spider-Man shows up. And they're like, what's happening? There's a sinkhole. Regardless. Um, is this the first appearance of this drone? Busby. So Peter Parker has an internal monologue with himself about... Um, I wonder if Mr. Jameson knows how I get these awesome pictures of myself. He says he used to set up a uh, camera and have it autofocus on him, but it would be butt shot. So he came up with this drone, Busby, uh, that would focus and follow him around. So they get really good shots. And then you see this awesome two-page spread where it's a um, bunch of these little, little fellas and um, this huge dinosaur. So he's going to fight this huge dinosaur. He easily takes down the dinosaur with some of his webbing, but then he gets piled on by these little guys, and he describes them as, it's ridiculous, they're a pile of albino stick men. It's an awesome, uh, his monologue in this is really fun. It's witty, it's um, lighthearted. It's exactly the Peter Parker that I want to read. And so he's trapped and then all of a sudden, Mary Jane to the rescue. 
So Mary Jane comes and he says, um, she is talking about the two-way communicator going both ways. And so she was able to hear he was in trouble, so she flies into action. He made her this suit so she can tap into his spidey abilities. And so that's how she uh, becomes spider-like and has superpowers. And so um, as they are planning how to take down this big dinosaur again and all those little albino little guys, um, you, you hear uh, guys and Annie Mae has entered the fight and is being taken away by the mole men, the mole men's creatures. So that's where the story ends. And it gives you a preview of next, uh, the next issue. And so you can see Annie Mae down there, Spider-Man, and Mary Jane um, in the fight. So overall, I think this is an awesome book. Uh, it's something that, as like I said, I'm not currently reading Spider-Man. I haven't been following Spider-Man for quite some time. I did not read the miniseries during the Secret Wars of Renew Your Vows. But... Um, this is worth picking up. The interaction's awesome. It's the exact Peter Parker that I want to read. Lighthearted, fun, um, you know, uh, hardworking, yet, uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, either way, it's a, it's a great read. I love the interaction between him and his family, um, himself and uh, Mr. Jameson. And either way, I would strongly recommend you guys picking this up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any comments or any insight about this issue that would help readers out like myself or other readers, it would be awesome. Please uh, share this channel, uh, subscribe to this channel, and smash that like button. You guys are great. Have an awesome rest of the day, and I'll be back out with the rest of my haul here in a little bit. Take care.